thanks to the typhoon, I'm stuck in the house today with a bag of lime, and I figured it would be the perfect opportunity to make a video on something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. For people making cocktails at home, we can't really batch squeeze our limes like they do at bars, so we're gonna do an experiment today to find out what's the best method to cut our lime wedges. The first technique is to cut across the roundest part of the lime and slicing each half into wedges. Option B starts off the same, but we're gonna crisscross each half into four pieces. Method C creates longer wedges that we usually see on a bottle of Corona or just a beer at the pub. With that out of the way, let's follow the scientific method. Step 1. Observation. Introducing diagram of a citrus fruit. This entire part we call the rind or the peel is the pericarp of a citrus. The outer skin or flafido slash exocarp is the zest we get when we zest a lime, a lemon, or an orange. Further in, we hit the pith or albedo slash mesocarp. This is a pale, tender, bitter tasting part of a citrus. The endocarp of fruit is separated into segments with pulp or locules filled with juice sacs. This is what we want to extract from. There are three factors for me that determines a good squeeze. Time is how long it takes to extract as much as we can from one single wedge. Yield is how much actually came out from that wedge. And lastly, taste. We don't want to have to squeeze so hard that the bitterness from the pith comes out. Which brings us to our hypothesis. I think the more surface area I can get my squeezing fingers to hold on to, the easier the juicing process. I'm also going to time myself during juicing so that every single piece from each group gets exactly the same squeezing time. Prediction wise, I think method 8 will be our winner today because we can get a pretty good grip on the wedge. With method C, the long wedge is a close second. Method B, the chunky quarters, will probably be the least efficient way to squeeze because of its shape. Now we're ready to move on to the experiment itself. We have 6 limes today, but to minimize our variables, I'm only going to use limes that are roughly the same size. We add 2 outliers, one super small and one gigantic. We'll deal with the fat one later, but for the experiment, these are the four we're using. I'm also rolling out each lime before juicing so they all get the same start. Just to refresh your memory in case you're a goldfish, method A is the one where we cut down the equator of the lime, then slice into four. B is the one where we start off the same but do a crisscross instead. And method C is the one where we cut down the longest part of the lime, make an incision inside to break up the white part, then slice into four long wedges. Since I didn't get the same number of wedges from each group, I put them all on a scale, then selected five of each that weighed almost exactly the same. Method A had a pretty solid grip, and it was the least messy one out of the three options. Method B, because of the shape of it, I had to get both of my hands on it to really squeeze. Actually, I ended up using both hands to squeeze all of them, so it didn't really make a difference there. C felt slippery, and there wasn't much juice coming out of it no matter how hard I squeezed. Time for the reveal! I got 25ml from group A, which is pretty normal. 24.5ml from group B, which was quite surprising, a lot more than expected. But my group C set at only 15ml. I actually thought I messed up somewhere, so I did another round of test on method C, and nope, still, 16ml. Conclusion, aside from the fact that it was a big waste of time, now that we have the results, let's take a closer look at the spent lime shells. A looks alright, there's still a lot of pulp on it, but most of the juice sacs have been broken. I usually get 5ml of juice from each slime wedge on average, so today's results were pretty normal. B was the one I wasn't a big fan of when I was squeezing. It kind of got everywhere, so I was really surprised that we were able to get as much juice out of it as we did. The one with the worst results was the long wedges, and it does make sense when we were looking at it. There's still a lot of juice sacks in the middle, which were really hard to get to because of how slippery everything was, and the insides kind of just rubbed against each other without getting bursted. Since we're already on a lime spree, let's cut the biggest lime in the best way for when you just need the juice but not the wedges. Cut down a little away from the center so you end up with a nice sort of cup-shaped slice. Repeat the same process three more times. This will leave you with one center column and four very easy to juice pieces. And yes, I know I'm holding my knife quite terribly throughout this entire video. Twist to release all the juices from the centerpiece and just squeeze the rest of slices like you would normally. You'll notice you get a lot out of your lime this way. So that pretty much covers everything. Oh, just one more thing. At the beginning, I was quite worried that we're going to squeeze too hard from the pith, but if you're just hand squeezing, it's almost impossible to apply that much pressure anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Again, thanks for watching, and next time we'll definitely talk about something else that's not lime.